This is a linear actuator. When powered on, it moves an arm which can push or pull things. The crazy thing is, these are actually pretty strong. All right, so they claim this thing can lift up 220 pounds. I weigh less than that, so it should work. Or maybe a safer option would be to just crush a can. So with how strong these things are, they must be pretty expensive, right? Oh wait, $35 in two days shipping. That's pretty reasonable. But where's the fun in that? We're building our own. So first we need to figure out how this thing works. I found some diagrams online, but that requires me to read, which that's just the worst. So instead I'm just gonna take this thing apart and see if I can figure it out. So taking this rear cover off, we can see that there is a, a series of gears. Uh, the first one comes from the motor and then it gets progressively geared down until it turns the shaft right here. There's also this uh, thick like petroleum grease all throughout this. So I'm, I'm guessing that's what these seals are right here um, to make sure all that grease stays in there. So taking this cover off, we can see uh, here's that arm that actually does the pushing. There's a couple limit switches here and here which stop it when it reaches its end of its range of motion. And inside here, there should be a lead screw, which is actually what's making this rod go forward and back. We might be able to turn this thing on while it's actually taken apart. This could be a horrible idea though. Let's see if we can make it push out this arm a little bit. All right, so there you go. You can see the lead screw right here. Um, like I said, and there's a lot of that petroleum grease still in there, uh, making sure that everything moves smoothly. Let's see if we can make a version that's mostly 3D printed. To power it, I'm gonna use these 24 volt brush motors that already have a gearbox built into them. I got a pack of like 10 of these for pretty cheap. Ideally for a linear actuator, you use a lead screw with a brass nut or even a ball screw to reduce friction. However, since we're going for cheap and easy, I'm just gonna use a quarter 20 volt that I got from Home Depot. So it's time to 3D print some parts. As always, you can find the 3D models and a list of hardware linked in the description below. If you want to do this project but don't have a 3D printer, then the sponsor of this video may be helpful. JLC PCB makes it easy to get an instant quote on your 3D file, and then they will print it on their industrial printers and ship it directly to your address. Uploading the 3D file to this linear actuator gives me an instant quote of only a couple dollars, and it is printed on an industrial SLA machine. You can also choose much stronger industrial materials such as PA12 nylon, which is printed on their multi-jet fusion printer. These technologies are still not very available at the hobby scale, but with JLC PCB it makes it easy. Okay, it looks like everything goes together, but let's see if it works. Connecting my power supply to the motor, you can see the actuator starts moving. Flipping the polarity of the power reverses the direction of the motion. There are a couple issues with this design though. There is nowhere to attach the bottom of the actuator, and there are no limit switches to detect when the actuator has reached the end of its stroke. On off-the-shelf actuators, you can see there is a little nub with a hole for a pivot. Also, it has a configuration of diodes and limit switches to allow it to stop before the arm detaches or bottoms out. So let's pick a second version of this actuator with these changes made. Most of this looks and goes together exactly the same as the previous version, except now there are places to attach the base to a pivot as well as limit switches. Using some basic limit switches similar to ones in 3D printers, and some diodes, the new actuator can be wired up the same way as the off-the-shelf actuators are. All right, here's a super low effort wiring diagram. 90% of electricity is black magic to me, so I'm not gonna try to explain this to you, but there's tons of great resources online. In this design, the limit switches are triggered by the head of an M3 screw that slides in a channel throughout the print. As it slides past, it depresses the limit switch and cuts off the motor. 
I also made a version that had a more consistent width when it was retracted, but quickly realized that was a giant mistake. <laughs> oh, sh I can't show this on YouTube. Anyway, the new design is working really well, but there's still ugly wiring all over the place. So let's make one last version that hides some of this wiring. For the gears in this version of the actuator, I'm going to print them using resin. They could totally be printed using an FDM printer, but Sarai Tech sent me their Fast Mecha White Resin, which is wear resistant and has very little friction. I mixed it in a 3 to 1 ratio with their Tenacious Resin to give the gears a bit more durability. I've been getting really great results with this resin so far, so I would highly recommend it if you have any resin prints that need to be strong and wear resistant. Okay, so the actuator is finished, but we still don't know how strong it is. Let's see if it can crush a can. Okay, so that seemed pretty easy, but it wasn't very scientific. Let's see if we can actually figure out how strong this thing is using a load cell. So I mounted the load cell to this piece of aluminum extrusion and then had the linear actuator push on it. I plotted the data from the load cell live on my computer and slowly increased the voltage using my power supply. The mount behind the linear actuator actually started slipping during the test, which means we weren't capturing the full force. So I swapped out the cap screws I was using for a proper hex nut. I was able to tighten this a lot more and hopefully get a lot more clamping pressure. Repeating this test again, I got much better results. All right, so it's holding about 240 or so, 230 pounds. So that 200 and something pounds is about the max capacity of this load cell. So I'm not sure we should really trust any numbers over the 220 pounds or 100 kilograms this is rated for. But I think it's fair to say that this linear actuator can push with 100 kilograms of force. So there it is. We successfully made a 3D printed linear actuator, which has very similar capabilities to a store-bought one like this. And it's really cheap, all off-the-shelf parts, um, and everything can be 3D printed on a home 3D printer. So if you like this project, let me know what I should do next. As always, I have more projects in the works, so subscribe for that, and I will see you in the next one.